Hey folks, welcome back to Junk Jaunt Day 2. We uh, started our morning here at Howdy Coffee to get uh, coffee to go. And then we're going to head out on today's Junk Jaunt journey. Stick around, we're going to go look for some more rusty gold. Our first stop at day two is Evan's Feed Store, uh, one of our favorite stops on Junk Jaunt. He's always got a very nice selection. He's quite the historian here in town. He, uh, he keeps all the history alive. He buys all the old town stuff and saves it, so uh, the history doesn't die. Got some old elevator buckets and some cultivator wheels. Super cheap for that nice old saddle. It's already broke in, 250 bucks. Some Schwinn bicycles. Look at that one there. It's got the tanks on it and everything. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Mike. How we doing? Doing good. Good. That's the owner of the store. Quite the collection. An old cupola. Some good signage. He's got lots of signage. Corn sheller there. Cream separators. Here's that old grinding wheel, like, like the one we fixed up for our friends in Tennessee. Oh, look at this old kid's bike here. This store is always a lot to take in. It's got a couple old gas pumps I'd love to have. More signs up top. Old sign from the Bow Inn. Anvil. $950 with the stand. I can't believe this old stove's still here. Another couple old gas pumps. I think he wants about a thousand a piece for these. Old metal barrels, Standard Oil, Nebraska. Here's an old forge, forge blower. It's even got the hood. Old barber chair. Coca-Cola cooler. Here's an old drill press like the one we bought. We still got a mount ours to the wall. It also has the little advanced thing here that I'm missing. That's how it works. Pretty 
pretty cool. Little Olympia beer wall signs with all the different animals. Another Coca-Cola cooler. There was one of these in the old gas station my dad used to go to to get his truck serviced. I remember one just like that. There's a guitar made out of license plates and barbed wire. There's an old transit. Very cool. Here's the tripod for it. I'd still be using that. Some old radios. Some old albums. A lot of the uh, classics. Sharp's beer clock. Old telephones. Toys. The blow torches. Cookie jars. We got Barbies here. You got to find them now. Well, I went down and I said, we have Barbies here. I said, okay. But they have their Barbie with you here. Yeah. Their husbands, their boyfriends. Some old oil cans. I see you. Everybody's home. If you've never seen upstairs, we'll take you up there. There's lots of good stuff up there. Whole room up here, upstairs, full of cool junk. We'll give you the highlights. Old butter churn plungers there. License plates galore. I talked to Mike though, he doesn't have any new ones this year, so. No need to look through all these. Lots of old shiplap hardwood. Nice stuff. If you were redoing the place in the house where you wanted that old wood, that'd be sweet. Old signage. That's a sweet deal on like a youth saddle there. Only 110 bucks. These are a lot nicer than the brand new ones. They're kind of worn in. A little dry, but some saddle soap would bring that right back. A little buggy seat. An old wall oven there. And bushel bushel basket lids. You never see the lids, but we don't really use them. Here's the old feed store dollies. These were nice because uh, the way they're over center like that, you can carry a lot heavier weight. Bunch of Petroliana there and some uh, spring-loaded tractor seats for tractors and hay rakes and stuff. All kinds of old cans and Old tools, if you're looking for an old tool, he's got it here. And he knows where it's at, too. You ask him and he'll tell you right where it's at. He's got old pump jack handles in here. Because a lot of people took the handles off their pump jacks if they used them on the windmill. So, like ours that we got from my aunt and uncle, we had to find a handle and he had it. Here's a bunch of old double trees and single tree harness stuff. Old vintage glass light globes. Old bottles. Here's a bunch of cobbler forms here. Different size shoes. Cameras used to be a lot bigger. 
It's probably got the spot for the tape in it, yeah. Little shoe shine box has all the stuff still in it. Look at all these rivet setters. Got a big one. Old Ooga horns. Ooga! Cast iron tractor's feet. McCormick Deering. Or just Deering. Got a couple old travel sprinklers down there. A whole pile of window weights. Some uh, bottle cappers. Lots more signage. He collects a lot of the signs from the old stores here in town. Old double saddle rack. Some uh, letters for up on the buildings and old buckets. Look at the old rocking crib. Here's an old tractor umbrella. And it's even got the, the big hoop for it to hold it up. That's neat. We had these in school back in the day. There was old film projectors. You could put a roll of picture films in here and just run it through turning the crank and it would project your picture onto the wall. Old store box of old shoelaces from like an old hardware store or something full of shoelaces. Here's an old, old radio. It's like a multi band, like a four band radio. And you can tell all of the frequencies that different countries would use. That's pretty cool. Everybody used a different frequency. Some nice old barn trolleys right there. Those would go on a track on top of a barn to put hay in the barn. Some old washboards. The big multi-blade cabbage cutter. Usually you only see one blade. This one's got like four blades and they're all adjustable. Even got an old Northwestern Bell telephone booth. Still got the the bifold door and the phone. That's not a real phone, no, it's a push button. I think that's just something they hung in here to make it look like it. Because that's all all plastic. Second stop in Broken Bow this morning is the Methodist Church. They've always got some pretty decent items out here. Here's a big old bucksaw blade. I might ask how much is that going for. We'll take that down to Ricky Wright in Tennessee and he can paint something on it. Got some smaller bushel baskets that are nice. Yeah. We might check on those. Kelly found a pair of antlers for dog toys. That's a big old pair. Yeah, Ruby would take about maybe four days to get through these. I might have to keep that portion of it and let the dog chew on the upper part. Knife handles. Another pair of antlers over there. If they're going cheap, we'll get both sets. Never used to see cob forks. Now I've been seeing them everywhere I go. The vintage baby stroller had to be rough riding back in the day. Pizza Hut light. Oh, yep. Yeah. Had some old hubcaps and more bushel baskets over there. We got plenty of the big baskets yesterday, but the small ones are still kind of nice to have when you're picking little batches of tomatoes and stuff. Bunch of old tools, some uh, six lug wheels, bread pans, bring 
separator stand. Lots of old iron, insulators. I need one more license plate, might be in that stack. These are the old insulator spikes. These would uh, screw onto the power poles or the telephone poles, whatever they used them on. And these glass insulators would go on top of these, just like this. They got the little screw uh, socket in there. These would just screw right on there like that. And the, wrap the wires around these. Old LPs. Lots of old parts and tools. Just miscellaneous, lots of stuff. What did you find, Kelly? Ooh, bags of zip ties. We use a bunch of those, huh? Yep. These are giant pack animal packs. Probably for horses and not mules. Those are huge. The big porch heater here. Piles and piles of old tack, old harness gear. Real variety of stuff. I might check on these hay rake teeth. Those are good for uh, yard art stuff. Old lawn jockeys. Little boy fishing down there. Three legged cast iron pot. Lots of old hooks and some hobbles. Old branding iron, the coach step, the buggy step, ice tongs. Old apple peelers, meat slicers, butter mold, food grinders, cherry stoner. Some uh, cabbage slicers, the slaw slicers, corn shuckers, or uh, corn, what you call it? I don't know why it's slipping my mind now. Old boxes, some sausage presses down here, pretty nice specimens. More cherry stoners. Oh, here's an old apple peeler. That's old school there. Old spring-loaded apple peeler. You turn the crank and that goes around the apple. And it peels the apple with this little blade. That's pretty slick. Pretty neat. It's even got a mechanism here that pushes the apple core off. Check that out. See how it pushes the apple core off? Boop. That is cool. Some old crocs. Some old spools. Look at this, Becky. Old World War II models. Got a P-38 and a Dauntless Dive Bomber, the Havilland Mosquito, some old boats, cool old models, this old miniature croquet set, some more Pez dispensers, those are vintage, those are all Star Wars, butter churns, old toys, more vintage old toys in here. Some high dollar old toys. Very rare. All the old retro Ken and Barbies. Here's a newer Hoosier cabinet. 
for bread baking. It's got a nice metal top on it though, easy to clean. No shortage of Pyrex this year. This one's more in the ballpark of 130 bucks, but real good specimens. More Pyrex over here, another set for 130. And then there's some spare part bowls down here if you're missing some. Old stuffing horn and a couple tobacco cutters. Here's an old ice box. Oak. Nice old canisters and cookie jars. These are just for all the time. An old vintage plain toy. All the time. Kid would have loved this so back in the day. For all, the time. all metal. We've been running around town this morning where it's a lot more yard sale-y type stuff, so I haven't been doing a lot of video. But we're headed out north into the country now, so there'll be a lot more to see. Trying not to make today's video like an over an hour long like yesterday too, so I'm just going to try to do the highlights today. Is that where little UPS trucks come from? A giant old bell. Now somebody told me the numbers on them are the number of miles the way you could hear the bell. This has a number 26. So I wonder if you could hear this bell 26 miles away. It's an old stitching horse here. Put your two pieces of the leather in here that you're stitching and clamp it. And then you step down on this thing there to lock it down. It tightens up on it and then you can stitch. You sit right there. Pretty cool old unit. License plates, grinding wheel. That's some good old junk at this place. More antlers. Different color lenses for lights. There's green and blue and clear. Little tiny elevator buckets. A little bit larger ones. Little military shells. Can't find those anymore. Oil cans. Seven Up sign, the Uncola. Remember that was their slogan back in the day. Little tiny jars. Kelly might like to take a look at. She likes these little cool off style jars for stuff. Kelly found the door for her new guinea coop metal door. Love, love, love this old building. I think it's like the old Grange Hall or something. But it's got a beautiful full basement down here with a big kitchen down there. It's the kind of place where you would have get togethers, dances. Or nice old uh, boards for renovation projects. Even got all the trim and everything here. The big tall baseboards and the crown molding, all that stuff. This is a neat little shelf here with the screen bottom. Here's an old barn fine Tornado. 
old iron, lots of porcelain, some old harness stuff, spring seats, some antlers, an old antler knife, $75. New old stock block and tackle. Never been out of the box. Another nice old sausage press. This one's in good shape. There's an old restored pump jack. And because it's restored, it's $400. You can usually get these for $175, $150, $175 for the rusty, crusty ones. So Kelly and I stopped here. It appeared that the uh, they were open for junk junk because there's so much cool stuff in here and we met Wayne and Wayne showed us around his property here we thought it was just an old barn but he's got a pretty neat thing going on here so how you doing Wayne good how long you been here in Nebraska uh, going on 20 years oh nice you you enjoying Nebraska over the I last 20 years it. I love it every 15 minutes it changes so obviously you like really cool stuff mm -hmm. like we do. You want to show us around a little bit? Sure. That would be awesome. You got a barn full of really neat stuff. That's why I thought you were open for Junk Jaunt. Because well, yeah. this is the kind of stuff people come out looking for. Uh -huh. That's, we do too. We love old history. Well, so this is, this isn't a business. This is actually the inside of Wayne's house. Yeah. And Wayne built it this way. Mm -hmm. It's super neat. Give us the rundown here, Wayne. Okay, this used to be the showroom. And what kind of business was this back a in the day? Lumber yard. This was a lumber yard yeah, building. It was a okay. Yard. And uh, the hole, I put the hole in the wall because I wanted more open. It looked like cubicles when I bought yeah. it. Yeah. So I took this wall out, made the bar, changed the paint room. To the kitchen. So the kitchen used to be the paint room. Yeah, it used to be the paint room. And then my room over here used to be more of a storage, I think they said. Because I was when I was working on it, I couldn't figure out what to do with the two lights. I put two ceiling fans. Nice. So it's I could definitely go for that. I get we run our ceiling fans almost non stop. Yep. Yeah. And then the shower room. All right, it's your little bathroom shower room in there. Yeah, and then I love this aquarium. It's a waterless aquarium. Yeah, aquarium. and he's got a bunch of fishing trophies down here. Were you a fisherman, or did you just do no, acquire those trophies? It was a friend of mine that he was the big thing, and he passed away. That kind of goes with your your whole aquarium thing here. That's a good idea, a good pairing. Yeah, they did that, and then the other two there. The other two, oh, you, I didn't notice those over there. We'll take a look yeah, when we get over there. This is the restroom. We call it the Apple Pie Moonshine Bathroom. At the Apple Pie Moonshine Bathroom here. Yep, and this is just a laundry room. Ain't got much in it. Catch all kind of laundry. Very nice. But I built the room because I was running out of space for everything. I love all the old wood. Yeah. Old naughty mine. Got a beautiful old pot belly stove here. Kind of a faux window mirror. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Now he lets people sign the wall over here, anybody that comes to visit. So he's got signatures from all over the country, even out of the country. You said somebody's from Canada. Yeah, Canada's yeah, right. Yeah. And then, of course, we had to put our mark on the wall. So we'll be immortalized here. Let's look at the kitchen because that is super yeah. neat. Yeah, that used to be the paint room. Got a pool table in here, a full bar. Here's the other waterless aquariums here. But you got to check out this kitchen. Isn't this the coolest kitchen you ever saw in your life? Oh, I got to show you something too. My dry good bins. Oh, those are awesome. Jack Daniels bottles. <laughs> yeah. That's that keeps pretty the cool. Mice out of there. Yeah, it does. Now you've got to check out his grill here. This is a grill in the house. 
He built this grill, right, Wayne? Yeah. He's got an old uh, stove door down here, an old oven door. And then look up here. This is a cow trough uh, ventilation uh, vent hood. You can't beat that. He's got the old crank for the grill and everything. That's amazing, Wayne. No, that is super cool. You got all the old gadgets and gizmos hanging up here from the rafters. Just an amazing job. And you know, there's no insulation on the roof. No? Wow. Just the plywood and tin. Oh, wow. It stays nice in here, but I had to do it that way because of this. It heated like a box. Oh, yeah, it'd get way too yeah. hot. So you grill. couldn't open the window because you got the back draft and you get everything in. So the last, like the last barbecue, well, we didn't use this. I bought, if you can see right under there, an electric one. Oh, okay, yeah. And it's a smokeless. So you just put it on the bar and throw your steaks and stuff on it. Very sweet. Everybody that visits this place calls it Wayne's World. Yeah, and I can see them. why. One, they made that sign for me. It's on the pool table. Oh, well, there we I go. For years, didn't know who put it on it. They don't knock me out. You go in and get your drink and some tea, whatever. But it was laying on the pool table with the saddle. So they asked me, still riding? I said, oh, I haven't rode in a while, but... If I get a chance, I probably will. But I had heart problems and couldn't do a lot of what I used to do. So I was thinking that sign, that's a pretty cool sign. So I put up there and that's how it started with Wayne's World. So then years later, they had friends, they had like a lot of lady friends, there were like eight or nine of them, and a lot of them didn't want to go home. <laughs> and one of them was the one that had the sign there. All right. Yeah, she came, she's actually a nurse. And she goes, yeah, I was thinking about that. She goes, man, this is so you. This is so your place. This is super cool. I've, if I lived local, Wayne, I'd come hang out with you, that's for sure. Yeah, every night we've got some I come through Dunning, you may see me come back and say hi. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yep. Well, Wayne, I appreciate the tour. Yep. And uh, really enjoyed your company. Yep. Uh, best generation right here. So we made it to the fairgrounds here in Burwell, Nebraska. It's usually a pretty good show, but it looks like there's not as many people here, but still appears to be some quality stuff. Had a whole box of branding irons. Here's one of them pack saddles I was telling you about the other day where you got the rings and you can hang the bags from up here. Nice old scale. old two-gun rig with a knife scabbard on it. Old rifles and shotguns. Old fishing lures. Okay, folks, here's today's Name That Tool. So tell me what that is. First person in the comments. Get the Mark Kelly Farm merch. Here's an old nice duster here. Riding coat. I'm old spurs, but I don't know if they're real. Kind of cast iron. If they're not just like replicated, these would be pretty old unit right there. Here's some of the old oil cans. You see they had the metal tops on them. And then some milk bottles. Butter churns. Tobacco boxes. Red wing jug. Bunch of old cars. License plates, but We've already looked through them all. Old gunny sacks with advertisement on them. Kitchen magic, perfect potatoes. Old oil cans and Chevy valve covers. Big old cleaver. Lots of knives and cleavers. 
Pretty cool. Got some Damascus in there going on. Old fire nozzle. There's some old bed pans. Chicken feeders. Nail kegs over there. Tractor seat galore here, every make and model you can imagine. Most of them cast iron. Somebody made a couple seats out of some cream separator bases. Just put the old tractor seats on. They're perfect height for that. Lots of old jugs and crocs. Old tools. Here's an old potty trainer seat. Somebody will come along yeah. and they'll like him. Well, here if you're going fishing, you can put your bait in here on your door. <laughs> this is the picture. Nice coffee grinders. Old metal horse and buggies. Probably pretty well collectible. They all look like they're going for about a hundred bucks. Get these old horse drawn models here. Railroad lanterns. Old tobacco shear, bottle capper, old seed pot covers. It goes on top of your planter where your seed pots are. More old oil bottles. This guy's got cool junk here. Steamer trunks, big boiler pots, neat old ornate shelf, looks like it goes on the side of a stove or something. Lots of cheese boxes, craft of brick. Got examples of some different barbed wire here and there's one named Kelly. The spikiest one. Probably pretty sharp, just like Kelly. Got some old pulley wheels. Another old drill press. Got a wagon wheel here. Looks like it's for maybe railroad or something. Some old tools. Old barn doors. Corn sheller. Grinding wheel, an old wooden one. Now, if you don't know what this is, you'd know the hay trolleys on top of the barn. This was the fork that would grab the loose hay and they would pull it up into the barn, wheel it into the barn, and you'd trip the top mechanism up here and it would open and drop the hay into the barn. Bunch of old lightning rods. Another lawn jockey. Who's that? Back when people used to ride shotgun, this is what they would carry, a little carbine short shotgun. Here's an old washing machine. You turn the crank and it moves that handle and agitates your clothes in there. If you've never seen one of these, this is an old scythe and it had a rack on it so when you cut the grain or the wheat whatever you were cutting it would lay down onto this rack and then when you let it loose it was kind of already in a shock and you could just tie it up real easy nice big rendering pots some wagon wheels and stuff knee-high soda old metal beat up sign Couple nice old steamer trunks. Been seeing quite a few of those. Another apple peeler. And smoking pots for beekeeping. Another sling blade. 
I call it a Kaiser blade. Lots and lots of porcelain here. Old aluminum juicer. Old tin. These are some old oil pumps that are restored. You would keep these in your shop and fill your oil cans with these. This thing rotates out of the way. Little sticky. Rotates out like that. You put your oil can on there, pump your oil. Comes out of here. If you pump it while this is, it just goes right back down into the deal. So when little kids start turning your crank, it doesn't make a mess. I remember these old tire ashtrays. They were around when I was a kid. I used to mess with them because they were rubber tires. Lots of lamps. Old jugs. Picnic basket. Coca Cola button sign. Mm -hmm. Lightning rods, those are a bit newer. Nice anvil. $450. Somebody will probably pay him for it. A lot of people love these old industrial light bonnets. Soda pop cases. There's a cage for delivering birds to sales or whatever, or selling them. Just throw all your birds in there. A little triangle, call people to supper. Another Uga horn. old locks. Some of those are reproductions though you got to be careful when you buy those. More antlers. Lots of antlers. They had to hook up with people in Chinatown in San Francisco and sell these. They'd pay big bucks for all these antlers. Old hay saw. We're cutting through the hay bales. Lots and lots of marbles. Old cat eye marbles. And some more clay marbles. Nice big old tool tray. Yards, dicks, and canes galore. A whole table full of crocs. Big number 30 croc down there on the end. Good mill and good working order. There's a Still pretty tight too, not a lot of wobble to it, but a little. More vintage die cast toys. I always say there ain't no going back. An old upright Maytag motor. And it's not froze, that thing would run lickety split. Now this sign here means there's a mom shopping with her daughter and you need to avoid them at all costs. Well, Kelly said we're going to pull the plug and tap out on day two. We've uh, gone quite a distance today, made a big loop, but we're going to go to Ord, Nebraska and have supper at Carl's Tavern. It's supposed to be prime rib night. See you there. If you wonder how we eat out and stay on our diet, it's not hard to do. Kelly had salad bar and a steak bite, which is an entree, so it's not a lot of meat. And then my secret is when you order your food, you order a to-go plate also, or to-go box. Put half your meal in the box and take it home and only eat the other half. And don't go crazy on your side. We also had a very light lunch today and only three meals today instead of four. So probably still within our calories. Well, I was mistaken. They didn't have the prime rib tonight, so I had to get ribeye steak. I guess they only do prime rib on Saturdays. And we're going to be back in that town for breakfast, so that's not going to work out tomorrow. 
All right, folks, we made it back to the old homestead. We've got all of our loot unloaded. So we'll go through it and show you what we got today on day two. So I'll let Kelly take it away. All right, well, one of Mark's favorite pieces today was this, they call it a shadow box, but the lady said it was actually, it's actually a light cover that goes up on the ceiling. Um, he's going to use it as a shadow box, though, and build himself a little place to put all his pie birds. Be my pie bird display shelf. Yeah. I'm going to put uh, cross shelving in it all the way down. I have with some of that oak I have left over from the uh, cider press. Work out good. Ruby's checking out the doghouse. Want to live there, Rubes? Very apprehensively. She don't know <laughs> what to think about that. So what's the doghouse for, babe? This is going to be, hopefully, the guineas adopted. Mark's going to build me a guinea coop yep. before the winter so that they have more room to uh, um, spread out when they're roosting and they have a warm, dry place for when it's cold and wet outside. So this will be inside the coop. This will be inside the coop and I'm going to put some straw or hay down in there and hopefully they will, um, in the spring, in the... the when they're laying, because they don't lay all year round, when they're laying, hopefully they'll go in there and lay in there in a protected place rather than... Because they like or... laying at ground level, right? Yeah, they That's... like tall grasses where they're hidden. and. So hopefully with this inside the coop, they'll lay in there and not out everywhere else and have a constant Easter egg hunt that we went through this year. Yep. So what else we got over here? Got some more buckets, food grade buckets. Four food grade buckets, a buck a piece. Yep, we got those. We ran out while we were doing apple cider, so that'll be nice having more buckets. Yep. And then down on the ground over here, Mark found a t some tires for a couple of projects he's got going on. Yeah, four sets of bearing wheels. Um, two projects coming up, I'm going to use those for two tires each project. And those have the split rims, so they're e really easy to put tubes in. We're definitely going to put tubes in everything. Next bucket is probably one of his biggest money savers today. Well, actually, probably not, huh? But a huge money saver. He got this entire bushel basket full of hinges for $5? $5 for all those hinges. All these heavy-duty hinges. These are all heavy industrial-type hinges. They're made for big, heavy, like, steel doors, but... You can use these on gates, anything you want to use these on. We're never going to have to buy hinges again. Yeah. Next one is another bushel basket. And Mark wanted a few baskets for when he's giving away the canned goods and some of the freeze-dried stuff. And so we were just looking for little odds and ends we baskets to do four, some of that stuff. Four baskets today? Uh, yeah. we got three small one, bushel two, baskets. Three. we got one, two, three, four baskets. Yep. And then I got this little silicone thing um, for use with freeze drying so I can pour some stuff in it and freeze dry some pucks of liquids or whatever I'm doing. You could poach eggs in that too, like in a pan. Yeah, that's actually what it's made for. Oh, okay. It's, it's supposed to go in the Instapot. Sweet. But I just wanted it because it was silicone. And then... I think that was a huge buy. Yeah. We got all of these brand new unopened bags of zip ties for... $7? Seven dollars for every package. So yeah. these are usually seven dollars per package yeah. or more. Well, yeah, this is a hundred, so this is probably yeah. double. We've it. got all these for seven dollars together. Yeah, that was a pretty good deal. We use a lot of zip ties. Oh, and this is my favorite thing of the day, which I wasn't going to pull the trigger on this because the guy came down to a hundred dollars, which was a sweet price on this. It's a whole transit set. We've got the tripod. We've got the cruiser stick and the transit. Uh, the guy used to do uh, work like that, but he doesn't do it anymore. He originally wanted 150 and then he said, well, I'll give it to you for 100 And I'm like, no, nah, I just don't want to spend the money today, but I'm going to regret it. And Kelly's like, well, if you don't want to spend the money, I'm going to spend the money. So Kelly bought this transit because she knows we'll use it here around the homestead, uh, doing grading and all the building we do and stuff. So... Huge. I've wanted a transit for so long and told Kelly that can be my Christmas present. <laughs> and we got some holsters. This one's a gun. Is this one a knife? No, they're both guns. Gun. Um, 
Instead of like the full Western rig, you can wear these individually just on a belt. So you don't have to wear the full rest Western rig if you don't want to. And I have guns that will fit in those holsters. So sure. that'll be nice. We got the dog some antlers. Yes, finally found a sweet deal on antlers. Everybody was wanting too much for their antlers, but Kelly found them for $3. So yep. the best chewy toy you can use because the dogs like Ruby, she can't tear this up in five minutes. It takes her like five months. So she loves them too. Yep. And then got Miss Ramona some more clothes. Cute stuff too. Cute stuff. Pretty in petals. <laughs> And some little skorts and some shorts. And then I liked this deal too. Found Mark some um, lined denim jeans. Oh, they're Stanley. I thought they were Carhartt, but they're Stanley. They're flannel lined. Wintertime. $60 in the store. I paid $1 for them. Still tags on. Yep, still tags on them. They had another pair that was used too, but we left those behind. And they're my size. They won't even be baggy. Nope. My current size. And then here's another pair that I found them. These are used, but they're in the length he always buys, which is really, really hard to find. Yep, run through the washer, we'll be good. Found another blanket, another dog blanket. When we travel, we like to put the kennels down on something so it's not wrecking people's floors. How much was the blanket? I paid $5 for that one, but mm. it's denim and it's padded and it'll Ooh, be nice. Sweet. So that was kind of a splurge, but it's the perfect size. We're almost done. Almost done. We need one more license plate. So if anybody out there in Nebraska has a 79 county, Hayes County license plate, contact us. Either via the Facebook page, we have a new email, markellyfarm at gmail.com, or just message Mark through the YouTube channel. We had a real nice guy from up in the Panhandle, way up in uh, northwestern Nebraska, that we talked to last year, he offered to bring these ones down that were missing. And he uh, he brought them all the way down for us and held them for us. Yeah, and then I found one at the Broken Bow Fairgrounds. Yeah, Kelly found one yesterday that you saw. And then guess what? More glass jars. <laughs> More glass jars. These five are for me, but these ones will be perfect to give people freeze-dried stuff in because they're resealable, they're airtight. Giveaway jars. Giveaway jars. So how much was Love all your fitting. giveaway jars? Um, it was $20 for, what was it, nine of them or something like that? Wow. She did them two for five, so. Smoking deal. Yeah. And this one we actually got yesterday, but we lost it in the truck and didn't find it till this morning. Okay, I found it under the seat. So that's here. really cool. Tall flip-top jar. And last thing. Oh, the, uh, we found two metal exterior doors very good shape with windows and screens solid uh solid core metal clad doors twenty dollars each uh we just couldn't find these things and today we ran across them at an old church they were selling them for 20 bucks each so that's if you know anything about solid um metal clad out exterior doors you know we got a smoking deal on these so we've got Two purposes in mind. One of them is Kelly's guinea coop will have a nice metal door on it. And then the other one's eventually going to go right here. Because when I eventually want a roll-up door here because the ice gives us trouble with these slider doors in the winter. So I want to put a roll-up door here with some uh, glass window. One, one bay of them will be glass windows. And then we need to put a man door right here, like we did with the shop, so you can just walk in and out without messing with the big door. It's going to be nice. So, another successful junk junk day. Day two. Stay tuned for day three. That's tomorrow. Today we hit the northern loop. Uh, yesterday we hit the, uh, the, the middle or the center loop. And tomorrow we're going to hit the southern part of the junk junk, the big 300-mile loop that... Uh, they do the jump john on so we'll see you bright and early in the morning stay safe stay healthy we love you guys thanks for watching but i do want to add one more thing add whatever you want my sweet i want to add or i want to say hi to the lovely young lady that stopped me at the burwell vendor yeah. to say hi she had stopped me and was so excited and said i just had to find you and tell you that we had watched your old junk john videos to get um 
excited about this year's junk jaunt. So I thought that was really cute that somebody recognized me. They always recognize Mark, but they never recognize me. That was awesome. We got her all fired up for this year's junk jaunt, <laughs> so she was ready to go. So whoever you are, if you're a subscriber or you're, you have a YouTube account, make sure and pop into the comments and yep. let us know who you are. Yeah, because she didn't drop her name, so pretty cool. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.